has changed a lot. Of course, now there is uh, no railway. Uh, the old bridge, which used to be at the bottom of uh, Melmore Terrace, is well under the water, and Cromwell's a good deal bigger than it used to be. And when we first came up here, uh, later on, we came up in 1985, and the dam had been finished, but they were working on the, uh, all the slips and landslides in the gorge. So they didn't start filling the dam until about 19... Uh, they didn't complete filling the dam until about 1993. Uh, and then, of course, they moved the old Cromwell. All the shops uh, were transferred up... Well, the shops were transferred, but all the... All the uh, business people went up to the mall, what, what's now where the present mall is. Um, How long did it take them, Tom, to move from the old Cromwell to up to the mall to relocate? Well, uh, from memory, about two years, I suppose. They, uh, they were working, they were building the new mall before they moved out of the old one, mm. the old place. Uh, at that stage, uh, when they'd uh, finished the dam and uh, the water began to fill up, they had a dredge down look, looking for gold at the bottom of the, uh, down by the point there where the turnaround is. And uh, we knew, we used to live at that stage just opposite uh, the man who uh, managed the dredge, that was Mr. Noel Becker. And one day, he, uh, we had some visitors, and I said, could they go down and have a look over the dredge? He said, well, I've just weighed out our week's supply of gold. And he came over with a, uh, it was like a, um, a um, tin, uh, at least, um, a, 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 oh, wait a minute now. <laughs> Ice cream. Uh, some, uh, it was uh, a good bit of gold. A little <laughs> container. And it was about three quarters full of gold. And he said, don't for any sake let it fall because there's about $4,000 worth of gold there. Wow. Heavy? It must have been heavy. Pardon? It was heavy? The... It was quite heavy, yes. Yeah. Um, Caleb, do you have any questions? If any of you guys have questions, you can just put your hands up and we can just ask some questions. Sean, you're always good for something to say. Did you like it better now or before? Well, it's a different place now. What I remember of it was when we came here for holidays. Now we live here and we came from Dunedin when I retired and we haven't, uh, we haven't made a, a mistake. We're quite happy we came here. Uh, the winters are a bit more cold than, uh, say, Dunedin, but it's a dry heat and you don't feel it so much. Since we came here, uh, we've had perhaps two times when snow has been down on the flat, and we used to get more snow than that on the hills in Dunedin. <laughs> Anybody else get some questions? No? If you think of something to ask, then you should ask. Okay. Um, Wendy, what, um, what did well, you do? I'm a newbie in relation, yeah. in comparison to these guys here. We had a holiday. We've had a holiday house in Cromwell for about 12 years, and then about seven years ago we came up. And my husband works for Central Bank's Trust, and we now live here permanently. And we absolutely love it. We absolutely love it. It's changed not as much as in Tom's time, but. There's so much building going on, it's just amazing. We had a wee drive around yesterday and found areas of housing that we didn't even know existed. So and we just love the, the way of life. We belong to the bowling club and various other clubs around the town and, and uh, there's plenty for everybody to do. Our grandkids love to come and visit because there's a used pool and all the facilities. Nice. And describe common one seat. Oh, I always describe Cromwell in one sentence by saying it's a big blue sky place. I just love, I just love the rugged hills and the big blue sky. Thank you. Good question. Caleb, you want to ask a question? Um, 
Why do you like living in Cromwell? I really like the way of life. I like the quietness. I like to be walk up town and, and to meet people you know every time. Go shopping and go to New World and there's always people around that you know. It's a friendly place. Lucy? Have you lived in Cromwell your whole life? No, no. I have lived here for seven years permanently. But we did have a holiday place before that. Where did you live before you came to I came from Invercargill. From Invercargill. Mm-hmm. What time and, and you, you know, Wendy, you had a, you used to come here for your holidays. What drew you here for your holidays? Uh, well, this was when I was at school age and the family used to come up for camping holidays. This was the, uh, the main attraction. Uh, we got in a little bit of fishing as well. I was quite, uh, quite keen on that. And uh, there was one occasion when we came up, um, we, we, were t- we were camping in a tent, but the farmer there, he said, oh, well, I'll give you some uh, bundles of uh, some hay bales to help out on the ground. And that was fine. It was a good uh, thing for him to do. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, hay bales had been full of fleas, so we spent most of the night scratching Wendy, what, what made you buy your holiday home here? Um, we used to have a holiday home in Arrowtown and we just didn't quite fit in there. And then we had friends that were, came to Cromwell and we came over several times to stay with them. We thought, no, this is where we want to be. Mm. And we've never regretted it for a day. It gets very busy here, doesn't it? In the, well, even now, really, but even in the mm. summer, it's mm. so packed down well, at the lake. Well, that's good, so it's mm. quiet and it's busy. You can choose. Yep. Um, so what's Wendy again. And now Wendy, Wendy again. <laughs> what, came, what did you do, Wendy? What well, you... I came here about over 30 years ago. My husband was a teacher here, and I brought my children here, and they went to Goldfield School when it first opened. I was on the committee for Goldfield School then, and we lived just across the road there. And so, what? What? Which year did Goldfields open? Huh? Oh, that's a question. Like Long time. <laughs> I would say 1984, 85, somewhere around that, 86. And I got involved because I was a new person into town. Um, the government put a lot of money in to build the dam. And the people that lived in Cromwell were a small group of people, say over just a thousand people or so. And all these people that were building the dam came in, two or three thousand people. And everybody felt very unsettled. So the government put in some money to have a community house, which we formed little groups to blend the old and the new people together. So after that, I got involved in an office helping people adjusting to the wind down of the Clyde Dam because a lot of people, they had a committee formed by government, they paid workers to look at all the things that were going to happen in Cromwell and how they were going to help the old and the new town build together. So that's building new schools, Cromwell College, the baths, everything that was built was all new to Cromwell. So committees were formed to look at what was happening and I got involved in an office then and my job was to help everybody that had a problem. So that went on for quite a few years. And then the government said they weren't, they said they built all these permanent houses and they had some temporary houses, but then they thought they were going to build three dams. So they built these big flash ministry houses and then the government said, no, we're only going to have one dam. So that put a lot of people unhappy. Because Wendy, people had can, I, can I um, just ask, where were the other dams going to go? Up. Um, Queensbury and there was another one up further wasn't it? Um, Luggett and Queensbury. So all that land was being bought. Oh, this week girl wants to ask a question down in Why do you like living in Cornwall? I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the weather, I love the people, I love the environment, I love the hills. 
I just love it. I moved back to, I was born and bred in Dunedin. I moved back there after I finished my job on the, on the wind down the dam, thinking I need to get back to my roots. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 18 months in Dunedin and I was back again, simply because I loved the weather and the environment, so I'm here to stay. That's what I like. But going back to where I was working, those people that had to leave town, that was really, really difficult for older children who lost all their friends and people had to move out of town, so it was very hard for teenage children to leave and go to other cities where they'd all been together. So that was very hard on families. And then we were left with all these buildings to manage. So our rates bill went up to cater for all the resources that were left here. So many of the, the buildings that we that we have around town now were, were built to help bring the new and the old yes. communities together. Squash courts, the pool, the... The ministry people were wonderful people for getting in and being on committees and overseeing the town as a family. Mm. It was a really good network of people, weren't they? Mm. And, of course, when a lot of them left, some, not all of them left, but when a lot of them left, we were left carrying the cost of a new town with very little people in it again. But it's built up again now because of great and the fruit industry and the grapes and all that's built the town back up again to the same size it was okay. in the dam. Sorry, love. Um, do, what do you think the makes Cromwell so new, unique to different towns? Nearby? Well, I don't... I would say space, a nice tidy environment, Underground power lines, underground sewage, very laid out town, except that we're a bit worried about the town centre now, because the shops are all leaving in the middle. So that's a wee worry. But other than that, it's just the beauty of town, the environment. Yes, ma'am. Well, what's your favourite piece about Cromwell? Mm. Old Cromwell Town, because it's got history down there and they shifted some of the old buildings and built a nice wee tourist centre and it's right on the edge of the lake and that's absolutely beautiful down there and the, all the tourists from all over the world come there now and you'd be utterly surprised because I work down there a couple of days a week and you get people from Dubai to Canada to America everywhere come to Old Cromwell. Where do you work down there? Oh, my daughter's got a little Lavender and plant shop down oh, yeah. oh, nice. So I enjoy the talking to the people. I don't know if I sell as much as I should because <laughs> I'm gathering information from the world. Yeah. But you want to sell Cromwell to other people too. Somebody said don't sell it too much because everybody might move here. Well, that's what this is about, trying to sell Cromwell to, is, to everybody. Yeah. But we're happy. Did you have some questions, Pablo? Oh, I just asked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Matthew? I, a lot of people are scared because it's growing again, so it's got another developmental stage now. But, and some people say they don't want it like Queenstown and Wanaka because they're going to lose their sense of community. They don't want a lot of tourists coming in, for example. But I don't know if that's valid. I think we can cater for all that. And we've still got a ton of land. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Yes, love. Do you think people should build more houses here? They are. I think we're getting a lot of young families coming in, which is really good for the community. Yes, love. Why do you choose to live here? I choose to live here because I love it. If you put me anywhere else in the world, I would live in Cromwell because <laughs> it's the best place. I wouldn't move. I nursed in Cromwell in 1940, before you people were born. <coughs> it's a long time ago. And you know where the hospital is, the Dunstan Hospital is? Well, the entrance there 
and there were no shops, no houses, no nothing, until you, you could come right up to Cromwell, because I had a horse with me. That's why I came to the hospital, because I had a paddock. And it came up by train, and I went and got the socks, and I could lead her right from the hospital, across the paddocks, there were no buildings, right up the station was there, where the station, it's a museum now, I think, at Dunstan. Clyde, yeah. At Clyde, rather, yeah. yes. And there was a doctor at uh, Cromwell, and a doctor at Clyde, and they used to come, the Cromwell one would come down and give the anaesthetics for the, the Dunstan one, and they'd do all kinds of operations. Uh, they didn't have to go down to Dunedin in those days. These two doctors worked together. One would do the operation, and the other one would do the anaesthetic, and then we'd flutter around doing what we were supposed to do. Oh, and when you worked here in Cromwell, did you work at, was Ripponburn the hospital yeah. back then? Ripon, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, no, it was the hospital then. It, it was a hospital. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, it wasn't Ripponburn. Yeah, it was, I it mean, was the I hospital. I didn't work at the hospital here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I worked at Clyde Hospital. Clyde yeah. Hospital. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Right. It, it was completely, um, completely different. Mm. And horse riding was completely different too because, you know, I used to go to the shows and I had to get down to the... I rode down from Clyde through the Conroy's Gully wow. and right down to Roxborough. <laughs> Spent the night at, at Levels... Uh, at, uh, what the other place on the way? Millers Place. No, 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 that other place on the way. Rose yes. Rose Junction. No, not that far. Oh, no. <laughs> how how that young day. were you then, or when when you, How young were you then when you when you rode all that way? How young were, were you? Oh, uh, I was before I was married. Ah. Oh, okay. oh gosh, yes. I hadn't met him then. I <laughs> know, oh, no, no. It was a, a completely different place. You know, you imagine, imagine where the, you know when you're going up the hill to Crom when you look down at Clyde and you see the masses and masses of houses down there, mm. which amazes me because they're not on the sewage. Mm. <laughs> uh, because it's, it, it used to be just a really little village. Mm. Yes, and now it's huge. Clyde is huge. But we, it, it was a lovely place to nurse at that, that stage, yes. It's a beautiful place. That's a heck of a long time ago. <laughs> And Cromwell is very well uh, catered for in sports as well. Mm. We have the uh, hockey turf, there's a uh, rugby ground, uh, which is also, I think, available for, for uh, football, uh, a good golf course, and uh, there's also uh, the... Uh, swimming pool. The swimming pool, oh yeah, it's the most important. But it used to be much older. Yes. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, and uh, at the college there, they've got a very fine gymnasium and also mm. a hall, which is good. Mm. It's a good space. But good our neighbour Ray talks about the skating in Cromwell. Oh. I heard, he, yeah. He used to, Ray Wishart, he's an old Cromwell, and he, he used to say, you know, I said to Ray, have you, have you, it's been a good winter, hasn't it? Oh, I felt a bit cold. And I said, well, not as cold as it used to be. No, he said, we used to have skating. Uh, every every winter, just about. Yeah, in fact, they held the South Island Skating Championships once at Cromwell. Where so, was the ring? And that was uh, uh, down where the squash court. courts. Scout where hall. the where the squash courts are under the trees at the squash mm -hmm. courts. Oh yes. Mm. And when we came here. Wait a minute! Somebody's asking. Lewis, um, oh, mate. Is that Ray Wishart guy? Is that where Wishart Crescent came from? I'd say so, from that family, with it. The Wishart Crescent come from that family. Yes. They're yeah. old identities. Yeah, oh, they're old identities. They really are. Mm. Mm. Yes. What's this? And I've got a friend who's an old identity, and her grandparents had the Stumble Store. It's got Down Stumbles on it. Down at Old Cromwell. Mm. Old Cromwell, yeah, Stumble mm. Store. Do you have some questions? Um. <coughs> <coughs> what images and colours? Would you like to see in a painting, Cromwell? Since what we're doing is recording these interviews and what everybody says will help us come up with ideas for the painting. Yeah, um, yeah she's I've got a really good one. You know the overlook at Jackson's Point? The visual look over there in the Wellingtonian trees and the meeting of the rivers, that would make a nice mm. space on that, you know, on your visual painting. 
and also a little bit of the old buildings in old Cromwell. And I'll tell you another thing was thyme, the herb thyme, which is mm. all over the hills here, and the little orange and yellow poppies, which is significant for Cromwell, well, Central Otago. I couldn't bring any today because they were down. Down the road, Lyra. Is it? Yes. So those are very important things to go on a painting. And rabbits are very important. <laughs> Lots of rabbits. Oh. And the big bruise guy. Yeah. And the bruise guy. Yes, no. Um, when was the first time you visited Cromwell? When I was a Tinsy girl, I had an auntie who lived in Clyde. And then later on, my dad worked in the railway at Clyde. And he used to ride the little jigger that used to fix the railway lines and he used to go up to Clyde. So when I was a teenager, my mum and dad moved to Clyde. So I was fruit packing in between nursing at Clyde. So I got used to the fruit and the environment and the heat. And that's what drew me back. This young lady? Um, do you think the mall would benefit from having a piece of art on the mall? I think the mall needs to be turned inside out again. <laughs> I don't know. How can we build people back into the middle? Perhaps we could have little statues of people all over the mall mm. inside. I actually had an idea about doing little figurines of yes. all the little people, of all the different types of people that we have coming to the town. Now. I think that would be lovely because. Then you can turn into a tourist attraction because we actually are never going to get real shops back in there again, as mm. I see it. So if we had a way of pulling people in to look at something, that would be wonderful. Mm. I just think we could bring this, the history of Cromwell into Cromwell. That's a great idea. Mm. There are some more uh, shops and businesses coming into the mall, but they're sort of outweighed by the number of real estate agents. Yes. 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 Unfortunately. But we're never going to get big shops like in Dunedin. And things like that. Well, we... <coughs> sometimes, like the warehouse, stops a lot of other shops and closes a lot of shops too. So we've got one in And the one mm. in Queenstown now. It's the supermarket effect, isn't it? They mm. kill everything yes, else around them. They do. Them. You've got to be really careful. We used uh, to have big furniture shops. Excuse me. Shops. Sorry, boys. Do you have a question? Okay, we'll be quiet then. Eh? We used to have a big furniture shop because a lot of people were building new houses here from the ministry people. So a furniture shop was really important, but when everybody bought the furniture, it disappeared to Alex. Because people only buy furniture every so often. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. exactly. So I don't see any other buildings can come. Especially if you make it well in the first place, unlike yes. what you can buy at the warehouse, I suppose. Yes, yeah. so we're sort of limited now. Yeah. Sean, do yeah. you have any questions? Oh, Pablo. Um, why do you like Lavinia? Who's that to? Um, I love living. I love living in Cromwell. I love the way. I love the feel of the town. I really love going up Barry Avenue and seeing all the sports fields on your left there, from the school right up the town. It's got a beautiful rose garden and a lovely park for the kids. Um, I like the way that you can run down that hill and down onto the sports fields from up the up at the top. Um, I first came to Cromwell actually when I was at high school when I came in a sporting group from my school which was Milton in Tokawara High School and was billeted here in, in Cromwell just overnight and we, we had sports games against the two dis district high schools and I've just never forgotten that. It just left a really good impression of me right way back then. Olwyn, um, can I ask you more about your horse riding? Um, that's quite amazing. From oh, I was a very, very keen horse rider. Did you, did you do eventing? There was a place called Wakawaiti, Wakawaiti. Oh, yeah. And we had to ride to school, and I suppose that's what started. Yeah. And then, you know, later on, when I should have been 
being a bit more sensible, even after I was married, you put up with it for quite a while. I had a horse, yes. They have great um, races at... Um... I'm not racing, you know, show, you know, show jumping and hunting and yeah. things like that. But everywhere I went, I tried to, you know, I was over an island, I managed to get a hunt in Ireland. <laughs> I'm one of these people that, are, you know, I wrote to all the, I wrote to all the Irish um, horse, uh, hunt clubs in Ireland, and when they got used to this girl that wanted a fortnight hunting, when the Americans come over for the whole season, they were very good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Drummore and just out of Dublin. But uh, Cromwell, um, it's a lovely place. I mean, you're lucky to be all born here, really. Mm. And but it, 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 I don't want it to get too big. And lose its special attraction, mm. you know. For the pe- from the Dunedin people, they still love getting away for their holiday up in Central Otago. Absolutely. Mm. Yes. The good part about Cromwell is that it's a, it's a hub centre mm. too. Yeah. It's Wonkers just up the road, Queenstown's just up the road, Abbotsham is just down the road a little bit. It's just right point, in the middle of everything. Centre point on four main highways. Yeah. 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 And it seems to be so, especially at the moment, lots of business and lots of activity. And, mm. and Sean? What do you think makes Cromwell so unique and different from other towns nearby, Tom? Well, it's uh, its situation. It's got the lake here, it's got the uh, hills, and it's uh, very close to uh, several other places you might go for skiing or anything like that. And uh, the stone fruit is marvellous. <laughs> what is or was your favourite thing to do here? Things to do? Me. The famous things to do. Well, I'm more a people person. I'm not a sporty person. I just love people. I love helping people. So... All my life, I've been jobs that help other people, which is a great career. She's a good neighbour. Helps <laughs> all the people. <laughs> so, yeah. And I think it's what you pick when you're, what you work at when you're thinking about what you want to be when you're older. You've got to say to yourself, what is my personality? Do I like to work with computers? Well, probably all work with computers. But do you want to work with people, or do you want to work in a in an environment where you're an art- architect or, or whatever you are. So you've got to find a space where you you feel really 100% happy. And you always have part of your job you never like. But you, the rest of it you must love when you think about what you want to be. Yeah. What do you normally do in the summer? Oh, God. Um, well, I've got seven grandchildren and there's always daily contact with one of them. Can you, Nana, take me? Can you do this, Nana? Can I stay, Nana? And um, so that takes up quite a bit of time. I still work part-time. And I belong to several groups where I go and learn more knowledge. Because I think as you get older, you never stop learning. So we all go to what they call the University of the Third Age, which sounds a bit way out there, but it's not. But it isn't. (laughs) It's just that you have people from university and other places who come and talk to you in the community and tell you about what they're doing for a job. So that empowers you with knowledge and then you give that knowledge to somebody else. So that's why we're very lucky here. All these people come to Cromwell or Alexandra and we can toodle along to these meetings and learn things. Lewis. Um, what is your favourite thing to do in the winter here? Just, sorry, just before we answer that question, Wendy, you were talking about um, you're a people person. Yeah. What do you think the people of Cromwell are like, the community as a whole? Do you think it's a... I think they're very settled now. I sort of... You, you hear people talking and you know if they're unhappy or sad or they can't do this or can't do that. I think... One of the things that I went along to meetings where they were looking at, the doctors, trainee doctors were looking at what is Cromwell, who is Cromwell, what do they need, and they said it was a very, very happy community and they only needed 
um, more bed space for people with brain injuries like Alzheimer's, mm. when people's brain are not working anymore. They need to still live in the community and not have to go to Invercargill or Alexandra. So that's the only thing that they felt we didn't need in Cromwell. So that's pretty tremendous, really. It's a very, um, very good standard of living here that oh, everybody enjoys. So that's great. Lewis, you're asking Tom, I think? Yep. What? what I like doing in the winter, was it? Yeah. wanted to know. Uh, there's plenty to do in the winter, really. Um, we'll put the garden, uh, well, it's quite a small garden, but it's been put to bed for the winter. But uh, I can play bowls indoors, I can play golf, I can go to our Probus, which has people talking, or we can go on trips. And I belong to the Lions, who still carry on with all sorts of things through the winter. They do a lot of um, work for the community. And uh, if we want to go to a film, we've only to go as far as Clyde, so there's plenty to do. And I look after him, but I also, <laughs> but I also play bowls, go walking and go to exercises. Mahjong. And go to Mahjong, yes. Who's the, who's the better bowls player? Mm. Who's better at bowls? Uh, well, oh, me! <laughs> yeah, no. You're better at golf. Yeah. You're better at playing them both. <laughs> yes, someone over here wants Matthew. to ask a question. Go on, Matthew. Um, what's your business's name and what do you uh, say? Maybe, maybe that one's not quite so okay. important. But you could ask what, what they did. What did you do when you... When I was working? Was that the question? What, yeah. what did I do when I was working? Yeah. Right, I was a, an industrial chemist and I first started at the wool mill in Milton uh, looking after their quality control, doing a bit of dye matching for the laboratory and dealing with, uh, uh, dealing with complaints. Uh, we got one complaint, which perhaps you won't realise you're not a knitter, but uh, this woman asked now, why is this jersey uh, so barry? It turned out she was using two different, uh, two different grades of uh, knitting needles. One was broad and one was narrow, so of course it made... Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course it made barry. Uh, so uh, then I went... I had some time for the firm over in England where we went to Bradford, which is a very important wool manufacturing area. And uh, that was quite an experience going to England too. And uh, you could uh, sort of see the differences. Over there, before radio and TV, when people were only, say, 20 miles apart, they could hardly understand each other. They had these... Uh, little dialects, and um, they're quite, uh, quite interesting, really. Um, then we had, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, living at a boarding house up there, and we had some uh, young chaps from uh, the border country of Scotland, and they were almost as bad on rugby as New Zealanders are. So they would sit up and listen to what uh, they were their results of their club uh, teams. From, uh, from Milton, uh, I went to Omeroo when the two mills got together, and then for a time I was in Palmerston North, or we were in Palmerston North, uh, where I was working at an elastic family training the staff on, on the machines, and then back again to uh, Dunedin, where Roslyn and Mosga were, but when I first started, there were about 13 mills, all separate, and by the time I finished, there were only about two major woolen mills, uh, and there were one or two carpet mills as well, but the whole industry was changed over that time. And I nursed in England, where all the upper-class people, they didn't go to hospitals, they'd have the whole hospital coming to them, they'd have nurses and everything coming to them. But then the second time, that was before I was married, but when I went over with Tom, they'd got a little bit more sensible. They'd realised that it was better to go to the hospital because all, everything would be there. 
But then they'd still have their private nurses all fluttering around. Where were you? Where were you nursing? Whereabouts in that London? That was in London. Yes. Whereabouts? Oh, in the Middlesex. In Middlesex. Yes. Yeah. Because it was really rather funny. I mean, when I say to people, I nursed Mrs. So and So, everybody said, "Who was she?" I'll try it here. I nursed Mrs. Neville Chamberlain. Exactly. <laughs> I know who she is. You I know. Who she is. <laughs> right. Well done. <laughs> Neville was a premier. Was the premier of, of England Probably before so. the war. Mm -hmm. The one that came home with so, with a piece of paper saying, "Peace in our time." Yeah, Winston Churchill took yeah. over from him. Yes. And Mrs. Chamberlain, the old thing, she only had a broken leg, mind you, mm. but she thought she was, you know, worse And she's in hospital for that for ages. And she used to say, May husband should never have been in politics. He was too honest. <laughs> and another thing I remember about Mrs. Chamberlain, I said, well, really, <laughs> exactly. I'm, going exactly. to, I'm going to see the trooping of the colour. My dear... There's no of. It's trooping the colour. So when I hear somebody say trooping of the colour, I think, my dear. It's interesting. I, w I went to Middlesex University. That's Did right. you? Oh. Mm. So, yeah, I spent a lot of time in Hampstead yeah, and yeah, Cock Fosters yeah. and Arnott's Grove. So, yeah, that's where I did my arts degree. It's interesting you say, Tom, like in Bradford, you know, like lots back then, well, even now, from one uh, suburb or small town to another, the dialect. they're next to each other, but their dialects are so different. Yes, yes. I can tell where my parents live, and three miles down the road, yeah. the accent changes, and I can tell that they are from yeah. Oldbury or Cradley versus and my good parents' within town. the whole of New Zealand. Mm. I mean, Southlanders roll their R's, mm. Yes. Mm. but... He does. Yeah, but... <laughs> You do too. Yes, there's lots of Southlanders around Cromwell, actually. Yes, there is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but my we children went to uh, Garston. He went oh. to Garston School for a while. Yes. And um, just that initial, maybe, exposure, but yes. they still, and his sister's even worse. So where were you uh, born? I was born in England. Uh, you did what? Uh, Birmingham. Where? Birmingham. 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 Yeah. Birmingham. So yeah, my parents live probably um, halfway between Birmingham and the Welsh border, so they don't live in the city. Also, they my relations out. have turned up. They turned up in Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I had an interesting time when I was in Bradford. There was uh, a girl from a mill in uh, in the border country, and Albert Selkirk was down there, and her boss came down, and he had served with the uh, Highland Division in Egypt. So when he heard I was a New Zealander, oh, he must come up to the common riding. Uh, and the common riding is held each year to make sure the English haven't come up again. <laughs> now, it's been 200 years, but you can't, you can't trust them. <laughs> so I went up and stayed with them, and uh, on the Thursday evening, they brought out the flags of the different trades, and they were sort of honoured, and uh, on the Friday morning, uh, very early, everyone went to the village square and had they known in time I could have represented something or other uh, and uh, luckily they didn't know otherwise I'd have had a horse to ride out. <laughs> I would have and they ride out there. across the little river and round the borders just to make sure things were all right. Then they came back and they have a flag waving ceremony similar to one they have in Italy. And then... Uh, oh yeah, Lewis. And what's the Marshland? No, um, what the lady next to you see was Marshland. Um, Marshland. Marsh, she was a sporty dancer. Oh, Marjan. Marjan. Oh, Marjan. Oh, yes. oh, good boy. Oh, yes, Marjan. Oh, oh you play the play with little blocks. Little tiles. And here you have, you have characters, you have bamboos. And you have circles, and they're all little tiles, and you make up. Uh, it's quite a, quite a, you know, intricate sort of game. You make up sort of things. Yes. Mm. M A H J O N G. Yes. It started as a mainly as a Chinese game, but uh, it became very popular all over. And you're all going to help with the mural, are you? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? 
<coughs> and we'll just say, and you'll be able to say, I did that bit there. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's where the brush slip. And you were to come back in years, to, years time, years and years and years time. Yeah. That story you, yes. you picked up from everybody will be drawn on that picture. The other thing is, when years ago when my children were at high school and then one of them was unemployed for a while and she went on a scheme and they built some of the stone walls around Old Cromwell. Okay. They picked up the stones from the old buildings and built some of the walls. So a lot of history has gone through with children as well, what they've done. They planted, the Goldfields children planted a lot of the trees out there in that big block of land on the highway there. And talking about gold, Aunt, my mother had a brother who was gold mining up here. And he sent, oh look, honestly, it's about as big as a one dollar hunk of gold. And my mother put it onto a tie pin and uh, a brooch rather, and, she, and they also sent another a, another hunt for my father to put on the tie pin. My son took it to Vasadim and lost that, but my mother's one, I took it to the, the guy down here that was wanting gold, and he was very good, good about it. He said, look, I'm sorry. I said, it's a bit of a hunk, isn't it? He said, it's a hunk, all right, and I want you to take it to so-and-so up in Arrowtown, who's a gold dealer. He said, I'll give you, you know, I'll just give you some money for it, but he'll give you what it's worth. So I've still got that hunk of gold, so I must take it up to the Aerotown fellow. It's quite a good shop, I think, in Aerotown. <laughs> oh, that's gold, gold. Have you been? I've been really Have you guys found any gold? Oh, yeah. 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 How much did you find? Um, I think it was around 